I'm back. Yes, another video, finally, that isn't a review of something. I suppose I felt for a while that the things that I could talk about, I kind of already talked about, and I've said what I needed to say, and nothing's really come up since then, and otherwise other people have really covered it to, to where I didn't feel that I had anything to add to what they'd said. And then there was the Lena Dunham interview. I, I watched the Young Turks report. I don't really have anything to add to their report itself. I felt they covered it quite well, and I agree with a lot of what they said. I, I agree that it was taken a little too far with... I, I don't think what the interviewer, whose name escapes me at the moment, what he said was that harsh, and I do agree, he probably meant it well. He was probably trying to, for a softball, say, you know, you are, you know, you're showing that it's realistic, you're, you know, and he's, he's trying to say in a nice way that, you know, she's not traditionally attractive, she's not what's cons currently considered to be traditionally attractive, it's, I think currently and traditionally actually kind of cancel each other out. Anyway, so her showing herself naked in the show, which I should make clear, I have not watched. I don't watch a lot of current shows. It's, it's courageous. I think that's what he was trying to say. And I completely agree with that. It's, I'm, I'm all for it. I honestly probably would have forgotten her name since I first heard it if it wasn't for the fact that she is not considered to be traditionally attractive, but she is willing to be that vulnerable in front of cameras. I think that's amazing. And of course, someone, you know, commenters and the like had to you know, bring up, oh, well, you know, she's not attractive, so what she's doing, what is she doing showing up naked? Okay, first off, there's the really simple answer. If you don't like it, don't watch. And I'm saying that as a, just in general, I, this is, this, okay, this entire video is addressed to people who think that way, especially those who express it. This is not to people in general who might just look at someone and think, well, that's not the most attractive person I've ever seen, and then goes about their business. This is about the people who have to say to their friends, oh, I saw some from someone really ugly today, or post online that someone is unattractive. If you don't think this applies to you, it probably doesn't apply to you. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying that everyone I look at I find attractive, but here's the thing. When I see someone that I don't find attractive, I just sort of make a mental note, okay, I'm not particularly attracted to that person, or at least in, in, on, on a pure basic physical level. And yes, I appreciate all of us, you know, it's, it's probably the first thing we notice is are we physically attracted to this person on the, you know, from the start, I would say. But, but yeah, if, if not, then that's it. Don't watch, don't look at, you know, don't, don't make a point of, you know, yeah, don't, don't make it completely clear that, you know, that person doesn't need to know that you disapprove of what they look like or what they're wearing. Now, obviously, this does not go for if someone, attractive or otherwise, is aggressively sexual towards people that have tried to be nice and just politely, you know, tell them, let them know that their sexual advances, advances are not appreciated towards this particular person. That goes for anyone, regardless of attractiveness, sexual orientation, gender, trans, cis, whatever. Obviously, that, 
Yeah, but... Yeah, that, that pretty well takes care of that aspect of it. Beyond that, what you might not find attractive, other people might find attractive. And honestly, as cliche as beauty is only skin deep, or, yeah, the, that, that saying, I have personal experience with, I have been, you know, romantically involved with people who were not, you know, what was traditionally perceived as beautiful. And I knew before I found them. I've, I've had some great mentors in my life, so I, I knew already. Sexual attractiveness is not purely about the physical appearance. It is also very much about the attitude of the person. There is, there is kind of a, a joke of this, you know, if, if a guy is sexually aggressive towards a, a girl, whether, you know, whether she considers it like, you know, a sexual, what's it called? You know, sexual assault or what is leading to that maybe, or just being swept off her feet. Depends on whether he's attractive or not. I'm not saying that this is accurate in all or even many circumstances, but that joke does highlight something that yeah, it is, it, we find certain people attractive, and if they are coming on to us, we might be inclined to say yes, even if we don't know anything about them beyond that they're physically attractive to us, and that they are, you know, agreeing to have, you know, some kind of sexual or romantic relationship, or encounter. And at the same time, if someone that we don't immediately find attractive is, you know, coming on to us, we might, you know, find that this is an uncomfortable situation because we have to turn that person down. And obviously it is this sort of thinking that leads people to think that, well, if we just shame everyone, and I'm not saying this is entirely up there, up, up, and, you know, up, up, and away, it's, it's not necessarily entirely something we're cognizant of. I'm, I'm not going to start rapping, don't worry. It is merely a subconscious thing, but subconscious things are not entirely out of our control. If you realize that you're having these thoughts, you might be able to, okay, maybe this is a s sort of freestyle, a, a spoken word kind of thing, but bear with me here. This is how I talk when I am passionate about something and I have a lot to say about it. So, yes, if you appreciate and, and admit to yourself that this is part of your subconscious thinking, then you can bring it to the forefront and say, you know what, maybe that is how I feel sometimes, that doesn't mean I have to follow what I immediately feel like. The, that is just, you know how sometimes you might be eating something that you're like, you know, well, this is not the tastiest thing I've ever had. When you're a child, you might go, ugh. When you're, you know, more mature, you might say, you know, I think I've had my fill of this. I think I'm going to try something else. Something like that. Because you don't want to hurt people's feelings. There is no good reason to hurt people's feelings just over something like that. Again, we're not talking someone who's overtly sexually aggressive and does not take no for an answer. So yes, when when people shame others because of appearance, because of how they're dressed, or because they do come on to someone that they don't immediately realize, as you know, if they don't take the no the first time, you know, rather, if they do take the no the first time, then this is not one of those people, then that sort of person 
if, if you shame that sort of person, maybe you will somehow bring about a world where everyone just conforms to specific, you know, specific styles of dress, at least according to if they are overweight or underweight, or yes, just this entire kind of spectrum, if, if yeah, if, if they are not traditionally attractive, they should not dress as if they are traditionally attractive. Yeah, it's really not gonna happen. However, when you treat someone like a human being rather than shaming them, when you just say to them, I'm sorry, I'm not interested, if they accept that, then that is that. There is no reason to single out that person any further. You know, and that person can then go about his life. And obviously, being turned down at first hurts, but once it's happened a bunch of times, then you're like, you know what, this has happened a ton of times. Okay, I'm just gonna head on to the next one. However, if their, you know, if their experiences with being turned down are much more humiliating and shame, you know, leading to shame, then they might not develop such a healthy attitude towards coming on to people. And that can actually lead to really, really bad things. A lot of people who do sexually negative things are people who have had their sexuality shamed at a point. And I'm not going to get too much further into that in this video, because this video is, in fact, about this kind of yeah, attractiveness versus, you know, those who are not found to be attractive. The people I've been with that did not consider themselves attractive, I kept telling them, I do find you attractive. And that was not a lie by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe at first the, the, the things I found attractive were not inherently the, the sort of visual or appearance kinds of things, but maybe after, you know, after a while it became, at that point, it was already something, I mean, I'm talking about if you actually care about the person, you know, and, and just to the girls and to the guys, if you are with someone who does not, you know, accept you the way you look, unless we're talking that you are unhealthy and their, your appearance was the first clue to that. If you are far too skinny or far too overweight, yes, I, I'm sorry, I personally feel that at that point it's okay to say to your partner, I really think we have to do something about this. But other than that, in other situations, if your partner tells you that you have to change your appearance or something like that, dump their ass immediately. And in fact, if they really pressure you to do it and start talking about that you have to undergo, you know, plastic surgery and you really don't want to do it, dump them and dump all their stuff if you at that point have moved together onto the, you know, the, the pavement outside of your apartment so that they can come home to that. In fact, especially the breakables they have. If you happen to live on, like, the first floor, you know, slip someone who lives on, you know, the, the a much higher floor, slip them some cash, explain to them the situation, get, you know, get in there, open the window, drop it all from that height. I'm not kidding at all with this. Now, once you've helped your partner to actually appreciate that there is beauty to them, they will also start to be more physically attractive because no one, no one is entirely physically unattractive. And when you, you cultivate loving feelings in both of you by reinforcing that they are not ugly, they are beautiful, then you will start to notice things. Like the way their smile is just 
entirely theirs. The, the, the way that it looks when they smile, when you make them smile, the way it makes you feel when you make them smile. And their eyes, the, the light in their eyes when they see you after a long time away. The, the way they look at you. There, there is a... I'm not the biggest fan of country, not the biggest fan of Carrie Underwood, but there is one line that I really have to repeat at this point. The, the look you get... Yeah, something like... The, the way you look at me that tells... The look in your eyes that tells me that you want me. These kinds of things. And these are not things that you can you know, slim yourself down to, or, yeah, in, encouraged by working out. These are things that come from being confident in yourself, from sharing love with your partner, and that, I do mean that both ways. And finally, I do just want to point out that, you know, anyone who makes cruel jokes about, you know, these, these people that I've talked about that, that are shamed. You know, and, and I, I'm of course not talking about these, the, the, the jokes that kind of just bring a subject to the forefront. That, that, that are extreme, but that also highlight that something is really, really awful. There is a... Richard Coughlin joke, and at least for the time being, I'm going to keep calling him that. I, I did see that, you know, video of his. I'm sorry, it, it really sticks with me for, for him, at least for the time being. And certainly he was Richard Coughlin when he made that joke. He was, I think it was the, the Eat a Queer Fetus for Jesus show. Yes, he, he makes the joke that if, you know, if, if you are drunk or high, you are two-thirds more likely to... you're, you're one-third more likely to be raped. And he points out that the flip side of that is, of course, that if you're completely sober, that means you have two-thirds more chance of being raped. And, seriously, if you're going to be raped, you want to be stoned off your ass. You want to be so drunk that you don't remember a thing the morning after. That joke highlights how horrible rape is and the fact that being sober does not mean you are safe from being raped. There are precautions to take, yes, but you cannot be 100% sure. And victim blaming, I've made videos about this, so I'm not... Maybe I'll make more. Actually, I'm not sure I've said everything, but that's not this video. My point is, if you're making jokes like that about the, the shaming these people undergo, that's a different thing. But if you're making cruel jokes about the, the people who are shamed by this, I just want to remind you, the reason those are funny is that people cut and starve themselves over the, the kind of attitude that makes you make those jokes. Sometimes, right up until they die. 